Hey everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to talk about the chronic hepatitis as well as the cirrhosis of liver, which is the end stage liver disease. And then we'll jump into the portal hypertension and we'll end with the portosystemic collaterals. Though the portal hypertension needs a very good separate lecture, we will try to make that later. But in this lecture, I'll try to cover almost all the cases that you can get in your practice. So without any further delay, let's jump into the main lecture. Let's talk about the chronic hepatitis and cirrhosis of liver. The chronic liver disease is characterized by diffuse parenchymal necrosis with extensive fibrosis and regenerative nodule formation. In case of chronic inflammation, always think of four points. There will be scar formation, there will be cell death, there will be fibrosis, and not for liver but for other organs, you'll also get calcifications. So here think of this normal liver. If you do some scar formation here, there will be irregularity of the margin. If you destroy all the hepatocytes within the liver, the liver will shrunken and will be smaller in size. In case of cirrhotic liver, if there is any hypoalbuminemia, then the gallbladder wall will be thickened. Due to fibrosis, the liver parenchymal echogenicity will increase and it may show a coarse nature. Now summarize these points. There will be nodular liver surface. In early age, there might be hepatomegaly, but it will normalize and eventually shrunken in size. There might be the enlargement of the caudate lobe or the lateral segment of the left lobe, and atrophy is commonly seen in right lobe and middle segment of the left lobe. Parenchymal ecotexture will be coarse. You may get signs of portal hypertension as splenomegaly, portosystemic shunts or varices, and ascites. Signs of hypoalbuminemia will be the ascites and edematous gallbladder and bowel wall. Now what about the color Doppler findings? There will be the portalization of the hepatic vein which will show that loss of triphasic pattern and the flattened wave. If the hepatic vein gets compressed, there will be turbulence. The portal vein will show increased pulsatility but the decreased velocity. You may get hepatofugal that is the air from the liver flow which we will discuss in the portal hypertension topic just after this one. The hepatic artery will dilate and try to give a good amount of flow towards the liver, especially if the portal vein shows hepatofugal flow. If you're a person to do elastrography, then on transient elastrography, you will get more than 7.71 kPa for significant fibrosis and more than 15.08 kPa for cirrhosis. For shear elastrography, it is quite device specific and measured in meter per second. The cirrhosis of liver is usually classified into two types, that is the micronodular and the macronodular one. In case of micronodules, you will get less than 1 cm sized nodules, which is commonly seen in alcoholic patients. And in case of viral hepatitis, you will get the macronodular variety. Here is a picture, you can see the liver is smaller in size and the gallbladder wall is thickened. The contour appears irregular and there is a huge amount of ascites present. The portal vein shows a pulsatile wave pattern with 16 cm per second flow. Here's again another picture and you can see the ascites along with the irregular hepatic shape. Here you can see the magnified image showing the portal vein with normal diameter and decreased velocity. The velocity was around 10 cm per second which is low in comparison to the normal value. The patient also had a prominent spleen. Here is another picture and you can see the irregular nodular shaped capsule of the liver with huge ascites. Here again you can see the nodularity of the liver. The nodularity is commonly seen in the inferior border of the liver. But if you see this on the undersurface of the liver here, this may be the early indicator of cirrhosis of liver. Here again the longitudinal high resolution view of the right liver surface showing the nodular liver capsule. The liver parenchymal ecogenicity is mildly heterogeneous and this patient was diagnosed as a case of liver cirrhosis. On the right image you can see a cirrhotic liver showing the hepatofugal that is the air from the liver flow as it is showing the blue color which indicates the air from the liver direction and there is ascites and gallbladder wall thickening. Here is a longitudinal transabdominal ultrasound in a cirrhotic patient showing heterogeneous liver ecotexture with an enlarged caudate lobe in compared to the atrophic middle segment of the left lobe. This oblique transabdominal ultrasound in this same patient showing the splenomegaly with dilated tortuous veins at the splenic hilum indicating the splenic varices. 
You can see a huge amount of ascites here with a bowel loop showing moral edema due to portal hypertension or hypoalbuminemia. You can also see the gallbladder wall is thickened and edematous due to hypoalbuminemia or poor venous drainage. Here's a serotic patient showing the coarse parenchyma and innumerable tiny hyperechoic nodules. This one showing the coarse parenchyma and innumerable tiny hypoechoic nodules. Again, you can see the surface nodularity and the coarse hepatic parenchyma. Here on this sagittal image, you can see the enlarged caudate lobe. This transverse ultrasound showing the right lobe to be smaller in size with an enlargement of the left lateral segment. On the right image, you can see this is the main lobar fissure. This one is the right lobe and this huge part is the left lobe of the liver. Here you can see some small indistest levers with surface nodularity and ascites. Here you can see the liver contour varies greatly as shown here where a large nodule protrudes from the deep liver border. On the right image, you can see a shrunken cirrhotic right lobe with ascites. Here again a nodular hepatic margin with ascites. Here you can see the enlarged caudate lobe with an overall coarse hepatic parenchyma. Here is the picture showing the coarse hepatic parenchyma. Again the coarse hepatic parenchyma. These are the dilated intrahepatic biliary tree which may also be present. Here you can see the coarse hepatic parenchyma as well as the thickened gallbladder wall. We have checked the portal vein velocity here which was around 16 cm per second. In normal patients, you will get 15 to 30 cm per second. So, this velocity assessment may help exclude portal hypertension. Let's see this case on real time, and you can see the coarse hepatic parenchyma with a thickened gallbladder wall. The biliary tree is slightly dilated. There is no portal venous thrombosis. The overall hepatic hecotexture is coarse. This patient had minimal amount of ascites, which is not well visualized here. Here again another view of the coarse hepatic parenchyma. You can see some diffuse nodular appearance of the parenchyma. This nodular appearance may be confusing if you are looking with the curvilinear transducer. If you magnify the image with high frequency linear transducer, you can see some tiny hyperechoic foci within the hepatic parenchyma indicating the nodular appearance. Again, another linear transducer view, and you can see these hyperechoic nodules throughout the hepatic parenchyma mimicking the metastatic deposits. Here you can see some hyperechoic nodules. These are well visualized with high frequency linear transducer. So, if you have the facility, you should definitely look at the liver in a patient with cirrhosis with high frequency linear transducer. Here's again a cirrhotic liver. You can see the liver is shrunken and there is a huge amount of ascitic fluid adjacent to it. You can see the ligament here. This is the left lobe floating within the ascitic fluid. This is the gallbladder with a thickened wall. In this type of very poor situation, the portal vein should not have a good amount of flow. Here you can see the portal vein is still showing the hepatopetal that means the towards the liver flow. Here you can see the intestinal loops floating within the ascitic fluid. You can see the uterus and adjacent fallopian tube floating within the ascites. The spleen was enlarged. and the liver showing the nodular contour with coarse parenchyma and thickened gallbladder wall with ascites. We have put color doppler and you can see there is no flow within the main portal vein. You can see some prominent vessels showing aliasing adjacent to the portal vein indicating the tortuous hepatic artery. Here in this picture you can see the nodularity with tortuous hepatic artery adjacent to the thrombosed portal vein. 
We have measured the piezoelectric velocity, which was 128 cm per second, which is relatively higher for the hepatic artery. Let's see this case on real time. You can see the nodularity of the shrunken liver with a coarse parenchyma and adjacent ascites. The gallbladder wall is thickened and edematous. We have put the color Doppler and you can see the cavernous transformation with portal venous thrombosis. The spleen was moderately enlarged in this patient. Another case with a thickened gallbladder wall with luminal slurs. The liver shows coarse ecotexture. The portal vein shows hepatopetal flow. When we magnified the image, you can see the coarse pattern is well visualized and the marginal irregularity which was not well visualized on a regular image is now well understandable. Here is again the irregular nodular hepatic border well visualized with the linear transducer. Another case with an irregular border and heterogeneous ecotexture of the liver parenchyma. The gallbladder wall is thickened and there is presence of peritoneal collection. You can see the gallbladder and the irregular nodular hepatic parenchyma with a shrunken size and the coarse ecotexture. Significant ascites is present. Another cirrhotic patient with a nodular contour, ascites and thick wall gallbladder. The overall parenchymal ecotexture is coarse. There are some hyperechoic foci within the parenchyma which may be regenerative nodules. Another one with heterogeneous and coarse parenchyma. You can see intrahepatic biliary ducts are mildly dilated. You can see portal vein here showing the hepatopetal flow which is normal. When we magnified the image with linear transducer, you can see the marginal irregularity is seen here and the coarse pattern is also well visualized. Here is again the coarse hepatic parenchyma with a linear transducer. It looks like some diffuse cystic appearance and diffuse fibrotic bands. Here is again the linear transducer view. You can see the diffuse coarse appearance of the parenchyma. The marginal irregularity is also well visualized. Another one with a coarse parenchyma and diffuse nodular appearance. Here is again another case of cirrhotic liver. You can see the gallbladder wall is thickened, there is ascites and nodular shape. On the lower abdomen, you can see a displaced intrauterine contraceptive device within the lower uterus. This patient was 25 years old with hepatitis B virus infection. Again a shrunken liver with an irregular border. Color Doppler shows the hepatopetal flow. You can see ascites here within the hepaturenal angle. There was ascitic fluid at the lower abdomen and the spleen was mildly enlarged.
In case of cirrhotic liver, in response to liver injury, there will be a localized proliferation of the liver parenchyma. This appears as regenerative or dysplastic nodules. Some regenerative nodules may appear more prominent than others causing diagnostic confusion with hepatocellular carcinoma. Most regenerative and dysplastic nodules are not well visualized with ultrasound, especially if you are not using a high-frequency linear transducer. We have already seen some nodules. Are they very much important? Well, this regenerative nodule may turn into the dysplastic one, which may further turn into the hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, these nodules may appear as well-defined homogeneous hypo, hyper, or isoechoic lesion. Occasionally, nodules may become large, atypical, or dominant. Here is an ultrasound picture showing a reduced echogenicity lesion within the left lobe of the liver in a patient with hepatic cirrhosis, which may mimic a tumor. Here is another hypoechoic lesion within the liver parenchyma. Ultrasound guided biopsy was done to exclude hepatocellular carcinoma and came as dysplastic nodule. Now, as a continuation of the cirrhosis of liver, we want to jump into the portal hypertension. In hepatocellular disease, the sinusoids are damaged, destroyed, or replaced. As the volume of normally functioning liver parenchyma decreases, the resistance to portal venous flow increases. The portal vein gets dilated and portal flow gets decreased. With increasing severity, flow gets reversed, which is called the hepatofugal flow. In case of severe portal hypertension, the diameter of the portal vein also gets decreased as a decompensation mechanism due to development of portosystemic collaterals. So what are the findings of the portal hypertension in ultrasound? There will be increase in portal vein diameter. The normal portal vein diameter is up to 13 mm in calm respiration and up to 16 mm in deep inspiration. There might be increase in splenic vein and supermesenteric vein diameters also. In portal and splenic vein, you may get absence or decrease of respirophasic variation. There might be diminished static or altered pulsatility of the portal and hepatic venous flow. You may also get hepatofugal flow. Portosystemic collaterals may develop. There will be presence of ascites and splenomegaly. Overall, you will get the liver disease also. Moreover, not to forget, you will get liver pancamal disease also, like cirrhosis, tumor, or even the Bacheri syndrome. There may be the presence of portal vein obstruction with thrombus or tumor invasion. And not to forget, there will be the increase in hepatic arterial flow. Here you can see a portal vein showing the 19 mm diameter, indicating it as a dilated one. On the right image, you can see in calm respiration, this portal vein diameter was around 16 mm. Here you can see the dilated tortuous snake-like pattern of the hepatic artery in a patient with a coarse hepatic parenchyma. The hepatic artery will get enlarged in portal hypertension. Here you can see the parallel channel sign which is commonly seen with the bile duct dilatation but the enlarged hepatic artery may also show you this feature. Here you can see the dilated portal vein with approximate diameter of around 16 mm. And you can see an abnormal hepatofugal flow on the main portal vein on the right image which is showing blue color in this picture. Here is again another portal vein and you can see on Doppler the portal vein is giving flow air from the liver as it is showing blue color. Here is one of my case and you can see the portal vein is not dilated but it is showing blue color indicating air from the liver flow. You can also see the dilated hepatic artery adjacent to it showing the red color indicating towards the liver flow here. Here is the patient and you can see the blue colored portal vein indicating hepatofugal flow and the velocity was grossly decreased. Here is another picture and you can see the portal vein showing hepatopetal flow but the flow velocity is grossly reduced to 7 cm per second. Here is the parallel channel sign. On color Doppler, you can see both are showing flow. The hepatic artery and portal vein should have same directional flow, which will be found as same color on Doppler. But here you can see the hepatic artery showing red and portal vein showing blue color, indicating the disturbance of direction. Here we have taken the sample and you can see the portal vein showing air from the liver flow and the hepatic artery is giving flow towards the liver. Here is again another picture of the hepatofugal flow. You can see the hepatic artery and portal vein showing different directions and the portal vein and you can see the pulsatile multiphasic wave pattern. Another patient with 9 cm per second flow in the main portal vein indicating the portal hypertension.
In case of portal hypertension, there might be the development of portosystemic collateral pathways. There are several collateral pathways we want to focus here. You will get the collaterals adjacent to the gastroesophageal junction. You can see the dilated coronary vein. There might be recanalization of the paraumbilical vein. You may get splenorenal collaterals. You may also get gallbladder varices. There might be hemorrhoids, which we routinely not evaluate. Here is the three vessels that you commonly not scan in regular practice. The coronary vein drains into the splenic vein, which is well seen with a sagittal view of the splenic vein. The diameter of the coronary vein or left gastric vein should be up to 6 mm. Within the ligamentum teres, you will get the umbilical vein. The diameter of this vein should be up to 3 mm. And the caudate vein is seen within the caudate lobe with a diameter up to 2 mm, counted as normal. Here you can see a picture of the spleen showing the splenorenal varices. You can see some dilated tortuous veins. On color Doppler, you can see these vessels quite well, indicating splenorenal varices. Again, the splenorenal varices as dilated tortuous veins at the splenic hilum. And their picture showing the splenorenal varices. Here one of my cases and you can see dilated tortuous vessels showing flow on Doppler indicating splenorenal varices. Here is a case of splenomegaly and you can see some dilated tortuous vessels at the splenic hilum. On color Doppler you can see flow within these vessels. Here is a huge size spleen with tortuous vessels at the splenic hilum on color Doppler. If we check carefully, you may miss some hyperequic foci within the splenic parenchyma. We'll take a separate lecture on the spleen and we'll discuss about these lesions on that lecture. So for that, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. Here's the picture of the dilated tortuous splenic hilar vessels. This is a picture of the gallbladder with a thickened edematous wall. If you get a thickened gallbladder wall, always try to put a color Doppler over that. It may not only be the gallbladder wall thickening, it may also be the gallbladder wall varices. Here you can see the color Doppler image shows some tortuous vessels adjacent to the gallbladder wall, which is not usually seen on color Doppler. So these are gallbladder varices. Here you can see the oblique view of the stomach showing multiple anechoic structures along the lesser curvature, some of which are located within the wall of the stomach. On color Doppler, you can see flow within these structures, confirming it as a case of portosystemic collaterals and gastric varices. Here is a picture of the left lobe of the liver. This is the heart and you can see this is the aorta. In between aorta and left lobe of the liver, this is the area for the gastroesophageal junction. On color Doppler, you can see some tortuous vessels adjacent to gastroesophageal junction, indicating gastroesophageal varices. Here is one of my cases. We have uploaded this video on our YouTube channel and you can see this is the gastroesophageal junction and adjacent to it there is a dilated tortuous vessel indicating gastroesophageal varices. Here is a longitudinal color Doppler image in the midline of the patient with a portal hypertension. You can see large tortuous left gastric varice is seen coursing from the region of the celiac axis towards the gastroesophageal junction. On the right image, you can see the splenorenal varices. Here is the posterior part of the left lobe of the liver and you can see some dilated vessels here which are enlarged coronary vein. On the right image, you can see the sagittal section showing the enlarged coronary vein running cephalate from the splenic vein. Here are some extensive varices in the distribution of the coronary vein. These are the recanalized paraumbilical vein adjacent to left portal vein. Here is a linear transducer view adjacent to ligamentum teres hepatis and you can see these tortuous vessels are extending outside of the liver. These are the recanalized umbilical vein. Here is an oblique transabdominal ultrasound showing the recanalization of the paraumbilical vein and on color Doppler you still can see this vessel acting as a portosystemic shunt. Here is again another picture showing a tubular structure indicating the recanalized paraumbilical vein. On the right, you can see a longitudinal color Doppler image directly over the umbilicus. A recognized umbilical vein carries blood towards the umbilicus. In this patient, the blood drained from the umbilical region to the inferior epigastric vein. Here is again another picture of the paraumbilical vein. 
Again, the recanalized parambilical vein showing a very good amount of flow. Again, the paraumbilical vein connected to the left branch of the portal vein. This is the paraumbilical vein in a patient with a cirrhosis and portal hypertension. The diameter was 7 mm. Now, here is the caudate lobe. You can see a tiny vein within the caudate lobe indicating the caudate vein. The diameter was 4 mm, indicating it as a dilated one. Thank you for watching this video. Please consider subscribing this YouTube channel for next videos. Don't forget to share this video link with your friends in the social media. Sharing this video link with your friends will make our channel grow faster. Thank you for being with us. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.